Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and your boy is no longer COVID ridden. So um, this came at the perfect time. I have a lot to film. Oh my God, guys, there's so much coming. Anyways, thank you, Mattel. <laughs> Mattel, Mattel Creations, Monster High, you know, the girlies over there, they were so gracious to send me Voltageous to review with y'all. And you know, I'm super excited. I am open here, by the way. We're not doing an inbox review. No, no, no. It's kind of a sin, I know, but whatever. I am so excited. You know, I'm a really big Frankie fan. And like, this means a lot to me because I was really afraid that I was gonna have to go up again the bots. I mean, I still have to kind of because I do plan to get a second of her. I do collect in and out of box. So yeah, that should be fun. If I don't, it's okay. But me, I'm so excited. Oh my God. Anyways, guys, let me just roll my intro real quickly and we can get into her because I'm so excited. Oh my God. Anyways, bye. <laughs> No. Hello. Anyways, guys, I am putting this video out at 8 a.m., which is like, you know, not times I'm typically up, but I'm putting it up at 8 a.m. because this doll does drop at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Mattel Creations website. I just kind of wanted to help people in case they're like on the fence of like need her or want her because like it's an hour away, you know, in the future. <laughs> Frankie, um, she's gonna be $75.99 on Mattel Creations website. If you're going to the convention, she's gonna be available at the Mattel Creations booth. I'm not sure if they've sold out yet there, but it doesn't seem so. So that's good. They might have a lot of her, but we shall see tomorrow. It'll be chaos probably but um, I'm not sure how fast she's going to sell out to be 100% honest with you guys but you know last time Frankie was on Mattel Creations with Honka Tour she sold out in like 12 hours so we might have luck this time we might we shall see <laughs> anyways guys it comes in this really cool like black box it has a bunch of electricity all around and there's this little cutout where you can see her windows partial of the doll and on the bottom it says Voltageous in electricity again along with the little Mattel logo and on this side you can see Frankie is running away from her problems like everyone should getting don't don't do that <laughs> and there she is again you know she's doing a nice jolt you know she's got to go get her doll too you know what i'm saying the lovely artwork was done by darko dark he does amazing artwork for all these doll lines we love he delivered with this one as well like always on the top you can see there's some more electricity right here right here on the other side along with a little monster high logo and on the back of the slip cover you have a full like draw of frankie like look at that like she's serving it kind of looks like she just did a reveal on drag race during her lip sync and she might be saved because of it <laughs> but she She's like shooting out electricity through her hands and on the bottom you can see all of the people who worked on this doll we have rebecca we have olga we have chris we have tamika and darko but now guys i'm going to slip the cover and show you what her box looks like without the slip cover basically so as you can see, Frankie is in the middle of her box. All of the sides are visible. There's no cardboard anywhere other than on the bottom. So yeah, I mean, I don't think you really need to see the bottom of her shoes, but I mean, this is great to put on your display without that slip cover. So you can totally see her all around without having to open her. Now, unlike Haunt Couture, you don't get the dust cover that you can actually like touch her, which I really liked about Haunt Couture, but this is just as nice. It's a lot better than what they do with Skelector typically. I hate the flap kind of motif because it's just, it takes up a lot of space and I would rather just see the doll like this you know but as you can see the background for frankie is black and there is electricity on the top and on the bottom where her feet are there's a voltageous logo and it's like a mirror kind of finish she also has her she the back of the box too because there's some more on the back so the back of her box is really nice as well it looks like she's like launching at something right here and it looks like she might have slipped on something right there and here is that picture that was on the back of her original slip cover but like more up close and let me read the little paragraph to you what the i was walking home from school and getting to the best part of an old voltage's comic book suddenly lightning hit the page and i felt a zap and everything went black zap all my head and bolts are tingling i feel a surge of power and an all too familiar spark in my fingers i got a bolt to my lab crap whoa look at my hair it's absolutely electrifying with these streaks and my face i mean my makeup looks great but that freaky fab lightning bolt can only mean one thing clang voltages is back i never planned on being a teenage superhero but this outfit is totally stitched for zapping crime just look at the shocking silver jumpsuit and the dazzling metallic jacket it. Paired with high wattage boot. Voltages is serving looks with a side of justice. I really, really want this as a poster. But yeah, guys, that is pretty much the back of Frankie's box. See, I love taking dolls out of the box because I feel bad looking at them through like a window like this. And this is like, this doll means a lot to me because this is my first like Monster High Comic Con doll that I ever got when Comic Con was happening. I got my other ones years later, like when Monster High was basically dead. This one means a lot to me because like I'm an adult. I have adult money now instead of like last time when I was a kid, I didn't have any money to buy these dolls. So I'm I'm very excited and I'm very grateful the Mattel sent her to me. So with all further ado, let me open this ghoul and let's look at her. I'm really excited. Like, woo, so excited.
And just like that, the only thing I had to cut was the waist. The rest of it is still intact in case I ever want to put her back in the box. And she's out of the box. Oh my God, this is so cool. <laughs> I've literally been like only like thinking about this doll for like the past few days since we first picked her. So um, it's very cool to be holding her like right now in my hand. So um, yeah. But anyways, guys, before I look at Miss Frankie, I'm going to show you everything that she came with and then we can move on to her. So first things first, Frankie came with a special edition stand. So if you're unfamiliar, these stands came with the first two Comic-Con dolls, which were Frankie's black and white doll and Gulia's dead fast doll. You can see dead fast in the background actually. And also Hank Couture came with these stands as well. But it's a silver metallic doll base with a clear post and they did fix the clamp. So if you guys remember, Hong Couture came with a also clear acrylic clip that broke easily by just putting the dolls on it. So I'm glad to see they added the one that won't break easily. The stand base isn't falling off like the Hong Couture ones, so that's a good thing as well. She came with a Monster High Skelet hairbrush that's also in vacuumized metal, and it is a silver metallic color. And last but not least, she came with her cute little Voltages comic book that is identical to the original big one, which I have right here. The cool thing about this one is it is doll scale, and as as you can see, the pictures inside match the official book, which I'll show you right after this. So like you can see, it's like really cool, like basically miniaturize this big comic book. And just because I have Dead Fast right here, you can really see the size is different as well. Dead Fast is not really like a comic book. It's kind of just printed cardboard inside and out and there's no pages like this one. So I really like this one a lot better. So anyways, guys, that is pretty much everything Frankie comes with. That seemed like most of people's complaints that for $75, she doesn't come with too much stuff. And honestly, most collector dolls don't really come with a lot of stuff in general. They kind of just are expensive. <laughs> but um, this is Frankie out of the box. I mentioned this before, but. I'm really good at repackaging dolls. And if you actually follow the way I opened this doll, you can easily repackage her yourself. It's just so cool to be holding a new Frankie doll. Like this is the third one from this year. So I'm super happy that, you know, we've had three Frankie dolls so far. And it's so funny because I just did a black and white Frankie custom a few like months ago. So it's like perfect. <laughs> so we're gonna start from the top and move our way on to the bottom. So let's get started, shall we? So this Frankie is in a grayscale, just like her original Comic-Con doll. I'll bring that down at the end for comparisons as well well. It's pretty much paying a homage to two Frankie dolls, so Voltages, obviously, and the Black and White San Diego Comic-Con 2010 doll. Now, she does have the Hong Couture face, but this one is just like a hundred times better than what the Hong Couture Frankie actually looked like. So, I'll show you a Hong Couture comparison as well at the end. I'm doing a lot of comparisons in this video, but the only color on this doll are her eyes, her eye makeup, and her blush. You really can't see the blush on my camera, but it is there. It's not as harsh as the promo pictures were making it look. Her eyes are blue and green. This one is a different color than her Hong Couture doll. I can tell you that right now. Her eyelashes actually look a lot better than the Hong Couture one. Why they didn't do it this way, but it just looks so much better. Even the cut looks nice. She has dark eyebrows, which I also wish her Hong Couture doll had as well. And she has her little lightning bolt that has some glitter on it and it is silver. The lightning bolt actually looks really cute. Now as for pixelation, this doll doesn't have it. She has black lipstick on. She has her signature little scar on her cheek. Honestly though, this is the best Frankie face that I've seen in a long time. And I hope that when they do more collector Frankie dolls, they have this kind of face because they really snapped with her mug. Like, look at that. Now, as for Frankie's hair, it is her normal platinum white hair with some black streak. They also added black tinsel in as well. It is the tinsel that you would see with Cleo. Now, this tinsel isn't too bad. It doesn't like react too, too bad. Her hair is around knee length, by the way, and it is a lot thicker than Hong Couture's, and you can actually see it from the sides. One of my issues with Hong Couture Frankie was she was really bald, but this doll has like a good amount of hair. And not to mention, it isn't like that weird feeling that Hong Couture Frankie actually had too. It's actually really nice hair. And actually, this doll is actually thicker than her reproduction too. But basically her hair is pulled up into a half up, half down style and the bangs are parted and also rubber band to the side. I am going to wash this doll's hair just to get all the box kinks out of it. Out of the box, I'm actually pretty surprised. Now the doll's head is a little hard, but it's not glue hard, if that makes sense. So like I've mentioned before, Mattel seems to now only like burn the hair into the head because like they don't really use glue anymore. And I'm happy that they stopped using glue with Monster High dolls. So now we 
can actually have an arrow of monster hydals without worrying about glue. So thank you, Mattel. <laughs> it only took 10 years. <laughs> and since we're at our head, she has the original mold for her Tiara crown that the original Voltages has. As you can see, it's just in a silver metallic coloring. I thought it was going to be like die cast metal because like a lot of the Comic Con does seeming to have that, but sadly it's not. As for her earrings, it is a brand new mold. They are these like little stars that also kind of look like lightning bolts and they're in a silver metallic paint as well. Frankie also has her metallic silver bolts. Then moving on to Frankie's outfit. So she's wearing this silver tinsel jacket and it is actually really soft. I get why they did the tinsel because they're trying to make it look like it's electricity like sparking out of her and it's a cute detail but it is kind of like cheap. It is also lined with this silver material right here. And speaking of her hands, she has a glove on both hands. It is a fingerless glove. Of course, it's Monster High and it is black and has that exact star that is her earring on there. And this is what the jacket looks like on the inside. And this is what it looks like from the back. Now, if we look at her jumpsuit, it's kind of a silvery blue kind of black color and it does have like a metallic shift to it. In the middle, you can see that star is bursting out a bunch of electricity. The top has that same material that is in the jacket. It's almost like that plasticky leather material if you guys know what I'm talking about. But it basically frames the top of her chest like a lightning bolt. She also has black straps to keep it on her and it does Velcro on the back. Now, I know a lot of people were like kind of disappointed about the belt, but the belt's actually a separate piece made of that same material as the top. And the jumpsuit stops at her knees and the inside of the jumpsuit does seem to be lined with a white fabric. So it is a little thicker than like Toralai's jumpsuit from Power Ghouls. Now, we got to move on to the shoes. The shoes are always amazing with Monster High. So she's wearing these black boots that go up halfway through her calf. They have, again, that little star lightning bolt on it and it is painted silver. It's supposed to look like it's stitched on as well. And these boots are just like really cool. They have a bunch of molded stars and stitches. And then the physical heel is just like her like Dawn of the Dance doll. It's got that plating again all over it, the silver. And the heel itself is like a little lightning bolt that's like super thick. And the shoes do have a weight to them. So that's really cool. I think they did a really good job with the shoes. I want to know what you guys think in the comments below on them. Imagine if these were like made of fabric and then the sole was made of this. I think that would have been so cool. Now, since I have her jacket off, I'm going to show you the articulation on this doll as well. So Frankie can move at her head up and down and all around. Her shoulder can go up and out. She can bend at her elbow and her wrist does go up and down and swivel. And something cool to point out is she has the original arm joint. So it's not like the other Skelector and Hong Kong Tour doll. So this is pretty much like a replica of her original black and white body. Frankie can sit. They bend at the knees as well. And that is all the articulation on Frankie pretty much. I do really wish they would do chest joints on these dolls because Wisp had it when she got her Comic-Con doll. And honestly, I really love that. Okay, guys, I'm going to get her back in her jacket. And we're going to do some comparisons. So BRB. So several Frankies stand before me <laughs> out of the many I have because I have an army, literally, you guys know this, but we have the original Voltages, New Voltages, Hong Couture, and my black and white reroute of Skull Shores. But I'm using her because she's out of the box and I'm not going to give down my original 2010 one. So whatever. So we're going to start with Voltages to Voltages and then, you know, so forth. <laughs> okay, guys. So as you guys can see, there's a stark difference in the original versus the new one. So the only thing that's pretty much the same on both of them is the headbands and and obviously they have the same face sculpt and the same body sculpt. The jacket is supposed to mimic like her little cape that is a bunch of electricity kind of just sparking. And I feel like it looks a lot nicer on the new doll because like it's, it has more movement than this stiff plastic piece, but it also is silver too. So I feel like it looks cuter. As for the outfits, hers is now a bodysuit. She was originally wearing a dress and the shoes on both dolls are actually like really cool, but I have to give it to the original one. I feel like hers are like a lot better, but this one has the metallic details, which is really nice. I think it's super cute that you can have both of these together. And I'm actually very curious if they're going to do other Power Ghoul dolls now because I think that would be a really cool collection to do like after Hong Kotor ends. So here is another black and white Frankie. So this Frankie has the same skin tone as the original 2010 one. This one is a reroute. If you guys want to watch the mini series I did on my YouTube, I'm going to link that below. But as you can see, the skin tone is a little different on her compared to her. Hers seems like a little more lighter and hers is more like of a matte, like solid gray color. As for the body, I think the body is the same coloring as well. So now we're comparing Haunt Couture to the Comic-Con doll. And as you can see, it's just the eyes look so much better on the Comic-Con doll than the Haunt Couture one. And you can even see the green on this doll is a different 
green on this one. And the eyelashes just look a lot better on her compared to hers. Hers are a little more fragile and thinner and they just don't look as nice as the Comic-Con ones. But also you can tell that the eyelashes start on this one a little farther and this one ends like really close to like the lid. Anyways guys, that pretty much wraps up my Sunny Girl Comic-Con 2022 Voltages Black and White Frankie doll review. Thank you once again to Mattel and Monster High for sending me this doll. It, it honestly is like a dream come true being able to work with Monster High because I've been like a fan of the brand since pretty much its launch. I have been collecting since 2014 but like since the beginning I was a huge fan of them and I just never had the balls to kind of like come out and say I want to collect them. <laughs> so it means a lot that I'm able to work with this brand that I've like just seen grow so much and I'm happy that they're still doing dolls for us fans. Now one thing I do really want them to kind of like start focusing on is getting out product to us fans without having it be a collector job if that makes sense. Like I would love to have some original Monster High dolls that are readily available for all fans to get not just like exclusives you know all the time now for comic-con it makes sense they've always been this way so but the price for her is quite expensive for what you do get i feel like 50 dollars for her would have been a better price than 75 so it does kind of suck the price but i think she is a really beautiful doll and i hope that this video helped you decide if you want to get her or not i think she's gorgeous but let me know your thoughts down below and let me know if you guys got her but yeah guys if you are new to my channel hi my name is jay and i do doll stuff duh and i would love you guys to join my channel Channel. And if you aren't following me on Instagram or on TikTok, it is at zombieexcorn as well. Guys, I will see you in my next video. Bye.